Hi, what's up everybody? Welcome to your daily dose of awesome. Your life 15 minutes of daily motivation, inspiration, and education so you can get your day started right. Today I want to talk about happiness. Uh, it is my birthday. I thank you so much for everybody that's given, sending me birthday wishes. Uh, probably today, uh, this live will be the only <laughs> piece of work that I do today, uh, which is cool. Um, but I wanted to talk a little bit about happiness and a little bit about a recent experience I had uh, dealing with uh, an apathetic manager, if you will, uh, as after I had uh, not lost my credit card, but somebody had no, one of the servers had misplaced my credit card. Um, and so the topic for today is called the difficult, infuriating, and pain in the ace road to happiness. And so, uh, so the difficult, infuriating, pain in the ass road to happiness. And uh, it's basically lessons from losing my credit card this past weekend and dealing with an, with an apathetic manager that pretty much can care less about uh, the, the, the situation and what this really taught me about that hard road to happiness. And um, and, and so I'm going to share a little bit of that story and share a little bit about some of the, the three key things that you need to keep in mind in order to not only keep your cool in certain situations, but actually have a path towards changing your mood and changing the mood of people around you and ultimately, you know, living, you know, being able to control whether you feel happiness or not uh, in any given situation. So uh, with that said, I just want to quickly introduce myself. My name is Fernie Sabados. I'm a lead generation and online marketing expert specializing in helping home business owners. That's network marketers, affiliate marketers, direct sellers multiply their incomes using the internet. I built my first six-figure network marketing business within a couple of years of discovering the information we teach here at Elite Marketing Pro. And over the past 10 years, I've personally been responsible for over $14 million in gross income into my home businesses and have helped our clients produce hundreds of millions of dollars more collectively in their businesses as well. So what we do in Teach Works, uh, what I will be talking about uh, may dire- may indirectly be related to some of those topics on how to, it is you go on go about building your business online uh, but for the most part these are general basically general lessons especially for entrepreneurs uh, that are gonna encounter a lot of obstacles a lot of flack uh, and, and just in general people you know as you as we live lives we're gonna be dealing with difficult situations difficult people etc and so hopefully what I, I deliver today will be will provide you some tools on how to main you know control your level of, of happiness and you know in turn control your your stress levels personally so with that said i want to quit i want to check to see if i'm live oh what's up looks like i am what's up everybody hello paula thanks so much for all the birthday wishes Derek, uh step hand merge jen uh so thank you so much guys so let, let me just i want to just hop right into the content please uh share this uh if you feel that this message is valuable uh, and also, if you want to learn more about Elite Marketing Pro, the person that shared this with you, there's a link in the description, or you can simply go to EliteMarketingPro.com and learn about how it is we build, help people build businesses, their network marketing, direct selling businesses online. Uh, but let me just hop right into the story. So, so I was at Dodger Stadium, you know, surprise, surprise. Uh, you know, I was hanging out with a, a buddy of mine, uh, so I, I hadn't seen him in probably over a year. Uh, so MIT friend, we were in the fraternity together back at MIT. Uh, we both studied the same major at, at, at MIT. Um, he's actually from near my hometown, so he's from Southgate, California, which is near where I grew up, and so and, and he's from Mexican heritage as well. So he's like we're like you know kind of like the twin towers of uh, of our fraternity, at least the twin Mexican towers, I guess you could call us. And so uh, you know I hadn't seen him in a while, and and so he great to say that he's doing really well, and so. I uh, took him to a game. I had an extra ticket. Uh, I hit him up and said, "Hey, Miguel, let's let's go to a game." Uh, I got extra tickets, so we, we went out. And <clears throat> as usual, I get I get uh, access to Stadium Club, uh, which is a restaurant in the stadium. So and you can kind of like sit at the rail and, and sit in nice office chairs and oversee the game, uh, as opposed to sitting in the little cramped seats with people kind of like climbing out across you when they want to go to the bathroom or. Get their food, whatever. I, I like I like hanging out in Stadium Club, uh, and some really good people are there. And and uh, uh, you know Joshua Picard, who's one of our EMP members. I'm he was, he's a bartender there, and I met him uh, there. And I and eventually got in a conversation where uh, I discovered that he was in network marketing. And you know so the rest is history on that end. But anyway, so I like that. That's I go there because I I want to avoid you know any any partic- particular. Uh, 
outside uh, issues or, or people that may be unpleasant or whatever. And so I had a, had a great time. The, the night's wrapping up. I get my bill. Uh, you know, I, I give the pursuit of my credit card. And then I get the, the, the thing back, the book back, and I sign. And then I close the book and give it back. And uh, and then it was like just a few moments later that I realized, hey, I didn't get the credit card back. I just got the the receipt with saying my credit card was charged. And so I walk, uh, I basically uh, go up to uh, the bar because the server had already left. Um, you know, they try to leave before the stadium breaks out, and um, and and every and the rush happens, uh, especially in LA. That can be difficult. So they they leave early. The servers leave early. And so I was. T I addressed the issue with the manager. Also, Joshua helped me out as well. But mainly, I was talking to the manager about, "Hey, I didn't get my card back." And uh, and 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 so uh, basically, the bottom line is the manager made very little effort to try to find my card. Uh, when I asked, uh, "Well, can you contact the server?" She said, "Well, I, I'm not able to contact the server." I'm like. I'm like, uh, why not? And it's like, well, I don't have the, the her phone number. I'm like, well, can't you get it? And it's like, well, it's all the way in my office, you know, down the hall. I'm like, I'll wait. You know, you can go down the hall and and and, and get the get the contact information. It's like, well, I can't leave the restaurant. Well, you can't. Like, basically, it was this constant excuse as to why she's not able to contact the server. And, and of course, when I you know talked to Joshua about this, he's immediately asking around and. And going the extra effort to figure out what you know what her phone number is and whatever, and eventually gets her phone number, and then the the manager's pretty much basically talking to me as if it was my fault that the card was misplaced. I didn't you know misplace it, and so so that that kind of her lack of effort, the the insinuation that I was basically something I did, and she's even telling me that I should go to the lost and found and and uh, and and look for my card. I'm like you wait you. Your employees, your people, uh, lost my card. Uh, shouldn't you be the one that, like, uh, you know, goes to the effort? So basically, the, uh, it was this back and forth. I eventually, I just got really infuriated with the manager and her basically apathy towards my situation. I was like, hey, this is my credit card. If if I don't find it, it's a big deal. Um, and and so whatever. And Joshua was really awesome. Uh, went through the extra effort, and basically, I was contrasting the responses that that Joshua had versus the manager. Manager, manager, apathetic, probably hated her job, etc. And Joshua basically going above and beyond to try to try to help me out in that situation. And so, basically, I was expecting a response more like what Joshua did, a friend, what a friend would do. And, and so, so that's you know the the, the issues that I I dealt with that. So the manager like total. Total apathy, uh, total, lacked empathy, and was apathetic towards my situation. Put the complete responsibility for me to find my card, uh, even though I don't have access to contact information for the for my server or any of that stuff. Um, and so the bottom line for me is, I was tr I was, I, you know, as a as a mentor of many, as I try to teach stuff, you know, every single day on on uh, here on Daily Dose of Awesome. Uh, when I communicate with people, I, I try to like kind of give them the opportunity to learn something from that experience. And so uh, I was trying to basically hint at the manager, hey, you're not acting appropriately. Uh, this is not, not how you deal with a customer, especially when they spend a lot of money here at, at Stadium Club. You should have some more empathy for them. But she just wasn't wasn't getting it. Uh, and I know in, in the hospitality uh, arena, you have to have a great deal of empathy because you're going to be dealing with a lot of different people or different situations, etc. So you have to have a great deal of empathy to be in that in that profession. And she just simply didn't have it. And so, uh, you know, so one lesson that I want to impart on you with regards to, uh, you know, being effective in your business and being effective with your prospects, being effective with people on your team, being effective with whoever it is you encounter is great marketers, great entrepreneurs, and just good people in general have have a lot of empathy. Uh, and what that means exactly, it's not sympathy. Sympathy, it means that, you know, woe, woe is us. You know, you, you join them in the suffering. Uh, empathy has to do with you. people, when they're empathetic, they put themselves in the, in the shoes of that other person, shoes in the client, and, and try to, like, see themselves from that perspective. And they can feel what the prospect is feeling even though they've never personally experienced that situation, so they, they're putting—they're literally just kind of mentally putting themselves 
uh, in their place, even if they have never been in that situation themselves. That's what empathy is. And so that's a number one trait that you need to have uh, when dealing with people. And obviously, we're in a people business. So I say hospitality requires a great deal of empathy. What we do here as network marketers, direct sellers, and, 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 and mentors, you know, what we're essentially doing here and teach you here at Elite Marketing Pro is we we, condi- we are building you up to be a mentor to others in this new way of building you know, businesses online. So you have to have a great deal of empathy. But on, be, beyond, and, and so that's one of the, the, the traits that's gonna allow you to have uh, you know, success. And maybe I could have uh, used a lot more empathy in my, in my situation towards the manager and, and thinking of you know, <laughs> trying to imagine her life uh, you know, in that particular situation. But at the time, it was like, I'm the customer. I, I, I want to, I'm thinking I, I need to, you know, ha- have something done for me on, on my behalf because uh, I can't do anything right now. Um, but at that, that point is when I probably could have done a, a couple of other key things to keep my stress down and, and, and hopefully prop my happiness happiness up. And so... So the n- number two thing that I, I want to, the, the second lesson I want to share with you guys is uh, are, are the t- number two and number three things are things that, that can help keep stress down and help uh, keep your happiness up. So as I got home, I'm fuming, really upset, you know, I'm texting Joshua back and forth and, uh, and, and I got some sage advice from, from my love, Shireen. And, uh, and, and so she basically, you know, I don't think she, she meant it as stage advice, but it was good. She said, uh, cancel, cancel the credit card and, uh, and just get a new one. Don't, don't trust them, whatever. She, so she's thinking that there, there's something shady going on that somebody grabbed my credit card and is going to use it or whatever. Uh, I'm not thinking that's happening. I think I, I seriously thought that they misplaced it. However, there was merit to what she shared. Uh, basically, the, the second lesson I want to share with you is focus on what you can control. And, and so in that situation, I, I, I could rely on these people to try to find my card, rely on this apathetic manager who could care less about my situation and just wants to do her job and get out and go home and, and not think about work until she gets back. Uh, and I can rely on, on whatever other powers that me that be, or I can take matters into my own hands. And those matters taken into my own hands is I, basically accepting that the card is lost, call the bank, Replace the card, uh, and and they're gonna luckily because it's a business card they're gonna overnight it so that's cool. Uh, uh, update the billing stuff that I have to update so all these things that need to be updated related to billing you guys know that uh, it's a pain in the butt and basically let everything else go. When, when as soon as when I started focusing on the things I could control I noticed that my stress came down and my happen you know my my feelings you know became more positive because wow there was a resolution to this. Who cares that they don't find my card? I'm not going to wait for them, whatever. I know it's a pain in the butt to have to cancel a card, but that's what I can control. And so I noticed that that you know focusing on what I can control and take care of now, uh, you know, basically, give, not only does it give you back control, but your happiness no longer is, is determined by the performance of somebody else, uh, if that makes sense. The, number, the third thing that I, that I really uh, want to share with you guys is uh, has to do with my with suffering in that moment. You know, dealing with a credit card, and I know that you know that's not a big deal. You know, the worst things that can happen to you, besides losing a credit card. But you got to understand, in the moment, that's the only thing on my mind, and that's really in whatever situation, replace losing credit card with other bad shit that happens to you, and that'll be the only thing on your mind. And it's very difficult to bring yourself out of it. So I shared that. One of the things you can do is focus on what you can control and let everything else go. Uh, the other thing was uh, something that came to mind that, that I had uh, heard from Tony Robbins. And what he says is, uh, your, ex- your expectations make you suffer. And so he says, trade your expectations for appreciation and your whole life will become a miracle. Uh, and, and so that, that really is something I started thinking about as I'm going through all this. Uh, and I was reminded of that quote, trade your expectations for appreciation and your whole life will change in that moment, it will become a miracle. Uh, and so he, he says that what are the chances of everyone in your life, uh, whether it's a server, whether it's a manager, whether it's your own family members, what are the chances of everyone in your life meeting your expectations? You know, zero. 
not everyone in your life is going to meet your expectations. Uh, in fact, no single one person will ever completely meet all of your expectations. So why did I get upset in that moment with, with the manager and, and as a result of the whole issue? Uh, basically, I had certain expectations uh, as to how she should be conducting her job. And I basically allowed that to ruin my night. Because, um, you know, I could have thought of a lot of things that I could have appreciated about that evening. I could have thought about spending the awesome night with a buddy I hadn't seen in a while who, who I have a long history with from back at MIT. I could have thought about the Dodgers having crushed the Rockies, <laughs> you know, that, that evening and, and, and uh, you know, provided me some moments of, of, of joy and adulation uh, when they did that. Uh, I could have thought of, of Joshua, uh, you know, you know, basically... Not only did did he help me out and go through great lengths to to help me uh, to help me out and and figure out where my card was, he actually even you know forgave my tab. I had a, a running tab of I don't know maybe 150 bucks or something at the bar, and and he just you know he forgave it. He's like, don't worry about it. You know he's he's doing what he can to alleviate you know my suffering in the moment, and I and I just. I didn't focus enough on on the gesture that he had just made to me, and so so if, if you trade your expectations for appreciation, your life can change in a moment. And so my suffering was because I, I I was not having an expectation met by somebody I did not know. Yet I was having a lot of really cool things happening in the moment with people that I truly cared about and appreciated. And so so bottom line for here, guys, is that. The the re, here's the real bitch to happiness, and it, it's, I call the the title of this this kind of lesson here is the difficult, infuriating, and and pain in the ass road to happiness. Because in order for for you to bring yourself back into a positive state, you have to like accept some things that might piss you off in the transition from uh, from from suffering to happiness. And the transition, you have to accept some things that we don't want to accept because we have this like. Uh, you know, righteous indignation about ourselves. And so here's the thing. You, you one, having empathy for other situations. So I could have chosen to have empathy for the manager and and, her, and kind of imagine myself in her situation. Uh, you know, even though I, as the manager, would have handled things differently, I don't know what kind of day she's had. I don't know if she hates her job or not. Uh, and clearly I have a much cooler and better job than she does in my opinion i just i'm able to do something uh powerful for a lot more people and she's probably just trying to get the bills paid so i could have had more empathy in that moment and uh and in fact we all could have more empathy you know in general uh, as we love our lives the other thing was trading my expectation of appreciation so rather than focusing on what i think she should have done focusing on on the other things that that were are growing right in my life which is a lot a lot is going great in my life Yet I allowed that one thing to really take over, and uh, and and ru you know ruin me for that night and and even the next morning. Uh, and finally, focus on what you can control. When you're able to focus on what you control and and no longer have those sort of expectations of others, then you're able to basically uh, get into action and and do something for yourself that's gonna you know make the impact. And let go of everything else. Letting go is the part that's difficult. Letting go of what you expect your 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 brother or sister or mom or, or dad. Uh, letting go of what you expect of them, and simply focusing on what you control and accept whatever else happens happens. That's a very those are three those three things: empathy, uh, trading expectations for appreciation, and focusing on what you control. Those are the requirements. Those are the things you have to fulfill on in order to transition yourself to happiness. And those are much easier said than done, uh, which is why we, we, ha we have consciousness. We have consciousness so that we can, in the moment, make some important uh, decisions to kind of change our state. Uh, and if, if, if we're not able to have that, that, that conscious awareness uh, of what's happening to be able to you know, make that transition then life becomes extremely difficult. So if you find yourself uh, upset at other people all the time, if you find yourself um, thinking that other, you know, certain people in your life are not meeting your expectations, then my, my recommendation is try to practice what I just shared. One, have empathy for the situation. Two, uh, trade your expectations for appreciation. What is it about them that you love or what is it about your life that you love in general and focus on that. And two, focus on what you can control. You can't control other people. 
no matter how hard you try, no matter how much you try to manipulate them, you can't control them. Uh, you can only control what you do. And so, uh, so these things take a ton of effort, require a, basically you to decentralize yourself. They, 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 they require you to take the focus off of yourself um, in, in a way where it's like these, thing, these things are happening to me or uh, I expect this person to do this for me. Decentralize yourself and focus on, on what's happening in other people's world and awareness of what's happening in other people's world uh, and appreciation for what's around you in your life. And, uh, and then finally, focus on what you can't control and letting go of, of everything else. And so uh, I'll, I'll end with this and then I'll, I'll see what you guys have some awesome comments here, which I'm going to uh, take a look at. Um, but uh, it reminds me of, there's, I think this is a Tony Robbins quote. I think he may have gotten it from somewhere else, but uh, I'll, I'll attribute it to Tony Robbins. There's a, there's a thing he says that's really, impact, that's really uh, pretty much a, you know, sums up the, the thesis of this entire uh, lesson here is the quality of your life is in direct proportion. So the quality of your life is in direct proportion to the amount of uncertainty you can comfortably deal with. And so when you when you basically focus on what you can control, uh, let go of your expectations and focus on appreciation, what are you doing? You're basically accepting that certain a, a lot of things around your life are gonna are gonna be uncertain. You have no control over them. Uh, they're gonna you know go all types of different directions. And uh, basically you're saying you're saying I'm gonna I accept those things. I'm gonna focus on the things I can control and accept that these things I have no control of. Therefore, there's uncertainty in those things. And emotionally, that's very hard for us to deal with as human beings, as survival beings. We want to control things because mistakes can lead to death. You know, at least they did uh, a few million years ago when we were, when we were cavemen. Uh, but, uh, you know, that pretty much, that what, he, what Tony says is pretty much sums up uh, what is going to, you know, maintain the quality of your life, level of happiness is uh, the quality of your life is in direct proportion to the amount of uncertainty you can comfortably deal with. And so that's it. That's pretty much my lesson on, on, on my birthday, dealing with that situation a couple of nights ago. Uh, I wanted to just share some of the reflections I had uh, from that particular situation. Hopefully it adds value to you. Maybe you're not dealing with a lost credit card. Maybe you're dealing with something even more serious. Uh, and But, you know, the, you know, truth is truth, and this hopefully can apply to your situation as well. And so uh, let me see. Love that. Trade your expectation for appreciation. Thank you, Heather. Uh, thank you so much for all of your comments. Uh, Joshua, what's up, man? <laughs> I'm glad you could learn that we could learn a lesson from this. At the time, I didn't think so and felt really bad. You were a great mentor. Go Dodgers. <laughs> Thanks, Joshua. There, there's Joshua commenting. Uh, he's the buddy that really went above and beyond to help me out that night. So this is so true. I stopped expecting anything from anyone, so I live my life within the moment. I appreciate life for what it is. Awesome. And thank you for the birthday wishes. That's really appreciated. I will practice this more. Thank you. Great. <laughs> awesome. So thanks so much, guys, for the participation. Um, so uh, this is – so right now, the, the, like, my, my work for the day ends. Uh, uh, I will get back to work, obviously, tomorrow, but I uh, appreciate all your wishes. I'm going to basically focus today on spending time with my family, and, and guess what? I'm going to a Dodger game. So take care, everybody. Have an awesome day. Love you all.